Hey, I'm Max. This is our 2005 LDB Convoy X School minibus. We've converted it into a camper, and I'll give you guys a quick look around. So, starting from the back, we've obviously panelled out the back doors, framed around the windows, we've got our curtains, just on a couple of wires inside, and we put the one-way glass on the back windows for a little bit of privacy. Haven't got around to taking off the decals from the previous owners yet, so we're currently representing the international school. Under the bed, basic storage, barbecues, what have you. Bit of a mess under there at the moment. We've got our bed, our soft bag board, and then overhead here. Basically more storage, clothes, whatever. Up top, we have our skylight. Opens up nicely, roof up inside, fly net, no danger. Up on the roof, we have two 150 watt solar panels linked together, creating a 300 watt solar panel, giving us all the energy we need. The solar panels are linked to a 160 amp hour battery that we keep under the bed. Um, the battery is also connected via this cable that goes under the front seat through the firewall and is connected to the van battery via a voltage sensitive split charge relay. So essentially when the van is running it'll charge both batteries from the alternator but when you cut off the van engine it will isolate the leisure battery in the back so we don't drain our starter battery and find ourselves getting stuck wherever we're parked. Um, so far, the two solar panels and the leisure battery have been working fine for us. Uh, we've had a fridge running for the past three days non-stop. We've been charging cameras, drone, laptop, uh, powering the lights, just anything we need really. Um, it's sort of taking care of all of our needs. So in at the front end, we have our kitchen unit. Uh, it's been made from like off cuts of plywood glued together, bamboo top. Found these little handles in the second hand store. Uh, so on this side, we have our fridge, uh, utensils, plates. Got the gas cooker up here, just a little Two burner stove, standard basic stuff. Inside here, have our fresh water, which is 20 litres, lasts a day, maybe two days, but super easy to find somewhere to fill it up and you can just pull it out, fill it up, run a hose in there, whatever. There is a submersible pump attached to this hose, which is then attached to our tap here. So, yeah, there we go. So there's tap and the pump. This switch here is for our fridge to turn it on and off. And this third one is for some LED strips that we are yet to put in. We only finished the project maybe a week ago last week. So we have a few finishing touches yet to put in. These LEDs are one. Over this side, we have to switch to the main LEDs. On the side of the kitchen here, we have our little extension, just clips up onto locking brackets, uh, it's fairly sturdy, it's enough to hold the weight of what we need, just putting extra dishes on there when we're cooking, that kind of thing. Always nice to have a bit of extra space in the van, right? Above the, uh, above the cooker, more storage, not so much in there right now, but I'm sure we'll find a lot of stuff to put in there. We've got two shelves. Have these little wooden strips running down so uh, things don't kind of slide around so much. Uh, first time we took it out, we didn't have these in. Every time you go around a roundabout, everything's going everywhere. So these are really helpful. Down here, we pull out these wooden dowels. Our splashback drop down, limousine style, if you will. 
So that lets a little bit more light in. It's also good for when you're driving because then they can see through the side window here. And then if you're cooking or when we're sleeping and we want a little bit more privacy, we just pull that back up, slot the dials back in, and there you have it. Over on this side we have our main switch for the main lights. It's just eight LED puck lights, standard LED pucks, all wired in through the ceiling, coming down the back to all of our electrics, which are on here. And also connected up is the fan. And up here we have a little panel where we have the connections for the fan, the connections for the lights. So if one of the lights breaks, we can just take this panel off and rewire it, whatever just so it's a little easy to maintain if necessary. In the shelving unit here, we have our 12 volt sockets, um, two USBs and a switch to control them here. Uh, these three are all cigarette lighters, also with the switches for each one. And on the end here, another two USBs. Um, honestly, probably more than we'll ever need, but I had the sockets left over, so I wired them in anyway. A few more cubby holes up top. Currently got some extra blankets in there. We keep chargers in there, that kind of thing. You can see at the bottom there, we've got our uh, 240 volt sockets. Uh, they're connected to the inverter and all the other electrical, like solar charge controller, fuse box, which is in the box behind the plug sockets there. So looking out the back of the van, as you can see, we're currently parked up at the beach. We spent the night here last night. Free parking, no bother. We're uh, in Denmark. There's a lot of good places to park in Denmark we've found so far. Um, don't really get much trouble from anyone. And yeah, nice night at the beach, barbecue on the beach last night. So again, these are our closets, clothes and stuff in there. We have the padded backboard and the pillows so we can stretch out a little bit, watch the TV on the laptop if it's a rainy day. As you can see, I'm a little bit tall for the bed, but uh, it can sleep okay. And luckily my wife's pretty small, so I kind of sleep a little bit diagonally when I need to. Um, on the side here, we have a little extendable mirror. And yeah, that's about it for this part of the yeah. We also have our little sofa here. Uh, just a small sofa, we don't spend a lot of time sitting on here. I mean, if we're doing any like relaxing inside, we usually sit on the bed. Kind of just perch here every now and again, putting shoes on. Maybe eat here if it's raining outside. We've got uh, all sorts of crap under here. Uh, so we need to install a curtain just to tidy it off a little bit. Same with the under bed storage, another curtain here. And then just keep things nice and tidy. Um, you can see behind, we've framed out the windows and we have the little curtains again. Um, just on wires, these are double skinned, so at night time it really blocks out any light uh, coming out of the van and in the daytime it blocks out any coming in. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with how they've worked out. So this is the side door opening. Um, as you can see we've got a little metal trim down the side here. And in the footwell, we have the uh, doormat that we cut down and glued in. I mean, if you watch any more of these like van tour videos, you'll know that this is basically standard. I mean, we, we saw it on the videos we watched, we lifted the idea and um, works really well. Up along the roof line here, you can see we've installed these hooks. Uh, they go all the way down. Autofocus doesn't like it when I move down there. There we go. So that's basically just to hook a tarpaulin on. Um, we didn't want to pay for an awning because they're pretty expensive. So we spent like what, a tenner on a big tarpaulin, put these hooks on and have some like tent poles. So it extends out maybe like three meters from the side of the van when we need it. I mean, in the minute we're kind of parked in this forest so there's not much space for it. But uh, yeah, it's a good vibe to have. So in here, as I mentioned, is all of our electrics. Um, we have our inverter, the volt sensitive charge relay, fuse box and solar charge controller. Uh, I don't want to go into too much details about that, but um, if you want to know about like the 12 volt electrics and wiring up a camper van, 
there's a lot of good videos out there on YouTube, um, that's how I found it. Also in here we have our uh, chemical toilet, just standard from eBay. Um, we only really use it in emergencies, I mean we were parked up in Copenhagen the other day and the missus needed a pee so she could just do it in the back of the van. I mean usually we're out in the countryside so you can do your business out there, right? Um, nothing wrong with that. So yeah, we just try and use it for uh, number ones if you will, because who wants to be driving around with a bucket of shit in the van, yeah? There's our sliding door on the side. Again, panelled out, framed off, curtains on wires, pretty straightforward. All the timber we've used for like the frames around the windows, for the cabinets, uh, the wall in between the, the cab and the van, it's all kind of um, like fencing quality timber. I picked it up from the hardware store for, uh, it's like about 50p a metre or something green timber, rough sawn, um, so I spent time putting it through the thickness planer, took a few millimetres off it, sanded it all down, stained it up. Um, if you're doing a camper conversion you're going to spend a lot of time sanding, a lot of time staining, but I think in the end the result's worth it and uh, we're really happy about it looks. And it's also lightweight which is uh, super. All of the fabrics we've used, um, like the curtains and for the backboard on the bed, um, all from the second hand store, all super cheap. I mean, anything we could get second hand, we've got second hand. Reclaimed timbers, cheap timbers, it's a way forward. In the front here, um, we have our seat covers. Uh, picked them up from the second hand store. They're just like garden furniture seats. And we've got some fabric, and the wife reupholstered them. Pretty comfy. And as you can see, loads of crap on the seats at the moment. Uh, one thing I didn't show you guys. Uh, just up at the front, above the kitchen, you can see there's like a hole in the roof. We've got a, it's like a solar powered extractor. It's just a standalone unit with a small solar cell on the top. Anytime it's remotely light outside, it's, it's running, it's super quiet. Just extracts a bit of air, gets the airflow going nicely. Um, really can't complain with it, I'm pretty pleased with how it works. Um, and yeah, oh, I didn't really talk about the insulation. But well, we got the van, it had 16 seats in the back, so we ripped all the seats out, ripped all the carpet out, all the plastic panels off the side, and then we lined it with uh, foil bubble insulation, and then 60mm earth wall insulation, so that's on the walls, the ceiling, and the floor, um, just with like uh, wooden battens as a, as a skeleton. Um, over that, there's a 4 mil plywood on the walls and ceiling, and we have a 6 mil kind of veneer MDF on the floor. Um, in the main part of the van, that's covered with like a line oak. In the back, it's just the, uh, the veneer. I covered it in the front because it was um, like a defect sheet that I got for free, so there's some marks on the front end, so I covered it. But all this stuff in the back and uh, under the bed. It's, it's quite nice, it kind of looks like laminate floor, you know, standard stuff. Um, yeah, on the walls is wallpaper we've got from the fake wood panel effect. Um, just because we like the wood panel vibe, but we didn't want to have the weight of doing it all with pallet boards. I mean, like your average pallet board is about 12mm thick. Um, you do a whole van, it, it adds a lot of weight to it, which is going to mess with the fuel consumption. So we went for the 4 mil ply and the wallpaper over it. Uh, same on the ceiling. So far so good, like none of it's really peeling off or anything. And uh, uh, they'll come back to me in a year and I'll tell you that's what it's out. So that's basically it for the, uh, the van tour. I hope you liked it. I hope you like our van. I mean, we're pretty proud of it. My wife and I did all the work ourselves. Um, we're going to spend this summer driving around Europe in the van. I mean, we're not full-time van lifers, but uh, we've just both quit our jobs living here in Denmark. We're going to move back to the UK and spend like maybe three months driving around Europe, different places. So um, if you want to maybe check out our Instagram, check out the YouTube channel, there'll be plenty more content of places we go, maybe tips on good places to park, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Hope you like it anyway. Take it easy, chaps.